there are increasing bodies of evidence suggesting that honey and sugar are not the same. Even though from a simple sucrose, like glucose and fructose standpoint, they're quite similar. See, it's not just the sheer macronutrient profile of something that can impact how our body responds to it. And we're talking specifically when it comes down to fat loss in this particular case. Now, the first study that I'm gonna mention is a rodent model study to illustrate a point, but then there's stronger human data that demonstrates some really interesting properties with honey as well, in the same vein when we're talking about body composition. So let's go ahead and break them down. After today's video, I put a link down below for Seed Daily Symbiotic. If you're making any kind of changes to your diet or your lifestyle, remember that the gut microbiome is where a lot of things start. So if you can reinforce that by adding in a good probiotic, Seed is a really good one to choose. And that's a 25% off discount link, what is called a symbiotic. So it's a prebiotic and a probiotic in one capsule. I'm not the biggest fan of adding lots and lots of supplements into the diet. I feel like you need to kind of pick and choose a few that really work for you. And a probiotic that is good quality is usually very high on my list. However, I'm skeptical of a lot of them that are out there. I like Seed because they actually put their money where their mouth is when it comes to research, because their product literally does work, and I've personally felt it. And thirdly, they utilize cool technology to have a better delivery system, like their capsule inside of a capsule technology. So anyhow, that link down below is for 25% off of Seed's Daily Symbiotic. I highly recommend you give it a try. So even though honey is sugar, and sugar can impede lipolysis or fat burning, it seems as though net-net, it still could be a positive for fat loss. Now make no mistake, I'm not saying that having honey come in over no sugar at all is going to be better. There's not a ton of nutritional value to honey, but it is certainly a better choice when it comes down to carbohydrates or sugar than traditional sugar. And there's some literature to just reinforce that. So this first study that I'm gonna look at was published in Nutrition Research. It is a rodent model study, but it's interesting because they took two groups of rats they gave them equal amounts of energy, equal amounts of calories, equal amounts of protein, equal amounts of fat, and even equal amounts of carbohydrates, but they gave them slightly different carbohydrate provisions. 20% of the carbohydrates in one group were sucrose, which is table sugar, glucose and fructose. The other group, 20% was honey, okay? So they used clover honey. Now for 33 days, they had them follow this diet in a very, very, very controlled situation, which is the benefit of doing these in rodents. Of course, their metabolomics and their, or metabolism and the metabolomics subsequently are a little bit different, but either way, it's controlled. The group that had the honey had 14.7% less weight gain. That's huge. And there's some reasons why we'll explain. But they also had 20.1% less visceral adipose tissue. Visceral fat, that's the belly fat that's underneath the unsightly belly fat that actually has metabolic effects negatively. Okay, so 20.1% less development of that. Then it gets even better. There was a 29.6% reduction or less advancement of triglycerides. So 29.6% lower triglycerides in the honey group than the sucrose group. And they ate the exact same proportions of food. Now what they did find is later on into the study when they allowed them to eat a little bit more at leisure or ad libitum in this case, the honey group ended up consuming about 13% less. Interestingly enough, one could say, okay, well they started eating less so they lost weight. So are the results a, an effect of losing weight? They definitely could be, but proportionally the amount of weight they lost to the amount of changes that they saw or the amount less that they ate to the amount of weight that they lost was quite a bit different. So they ate 13.3% less, yet ended up having 14.7% less weight gain, right? So that doesn't always add up right there. Point is, is regardless whether you are talking about the calories in, calories out situation here, there's something very fascinating. And with this, we need to progress into a human study. And there is a human study. This study was published in Science World Journal, and it did a very similar thing. One group of people divided into two, and then they had a honey group and a sucrose group. What they did is for 30 days, one group consumed 70 grams of sucrose in addition to the rest of their diet, 70 grams of sucrose. The other group consumed 70 grams of honey. So 70 grams of carbohydrates coming from honey. Now, although the results weren't quite as profound as they were in the rodent model group, 
there was still a 1.3% weight loss and a 1.1% body fat loss in the honey group compared to the sucrose group. Hmm, what's going on here? Well, there was also a 3.2% reduction in overall inflammation, C-reactive protein. There was an 11% reduction in triglycerides. That is nothing to sneeze at. 11% reduction in triglycerides in humans by swapping out sugar for honey. And then lastly, there was a 4.2% reduction in fasting glucose. But we've seen the glucose stuff in other studies. I've talked about that in other videos here on this channel that, yeah, when you have uh, honey versus regular sugar, it does seem to bring fasting glucose down. So what is it that's actually going on here? I mean, could it be the different sugars? Could it be the enzymes? Could it be the effect on gut hormones itself? Well, with that, we actually look at another study that investigated the whole gut hormone piece. Now, gut hormones or gut incretins have become very famous recently because we've heard of things like Ozempic and Wagovi where those things are gut incretins, or in this case, they're agonists in those drugs, but they influence appetite and ultimately weight loss, right? So gut hormones are now top of mind. We think about these things. And PYY is another gut hormone that is very similar to GLP-1 in many ways. So there was a study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and it looked at eating a breakfast that was 450 calories, like a croissant type thing, that was sweetened with sugar or equal amount calories sweetened with honey. So 450 calories sweetened with sugar or 450 calories sweetened with honey. And the results after the fact, not just at baseline, but 30 minutes after and every 30 minutes for 240 minutes afterwards were pretty wild. They found that there was a significant delay in the ghrelin response. Now ghrelin is the hunger hormone, right? So what they found is that people got hungry a little bit later and it was delayed. So basically the entire ghrelin response was delayed and ultimately led them to having more satiety throughout the rest of the day, which is wild because you're still talking some carbohydrates in the mix. You're just talking a whole delay in the wave there. Of course, they also saw that it blunted the glucose response, which is a huge piece that we know to exist when it comes down to honey. We know that honey seems to lower glucose or keep glucose modulated much more than regular sugar does, which definitely could have influenced the ghrelin, could have influenced the appetite. But they also found that there was a big increase in PYY. PYY is a specific hunger hormone that communicates with the hypothalamus. So it almost tells the headquarters to not be hungry. Whereas, for example, GLP-1 binds to a receptor that is going to almost tell you from neck down or from the gut to say, hey, I'm not really hungry, I don't need to eat anymore. PYY is more of a communicator to the brain. So in a way, it made it so that the brain wasn't hungry afterwards. So even though we're equal calories and macronutrients, if you're trying to lose fat, honey might be a better solution there. But let's investigate more as to why. I want to know why. Well, there was a study that was published in Evidence-Based Integrative Medicine that was a review that looked at a lot of different things. So some of the things I'm going to talk about are all encompassed in that review in different journals within that review. We have to look at other sugars that are in honey. For example, there is a sugar called turnose. Now, turnose turns down adipogenesis. It turns down lipid accumulation in the cells compared to glucose. And we've seen this in vitro where you compare turlose to, say, glucose or even sucrose. And turlose is going to actually downregulate the amount of lipid accumulation and adipogenesis, so fat accumulation, potential hypertrophy of fat cells, compared to glucose. Now, there's not a ton of turlose in honey, but it does make up part of it. Then there's one that's called lucrose. Now, we've seen in rodent models that lucrose is a sugar that seems to, again, downregulate lipid accumulation, especially when giving rats a high fat diet to try to induce weight gain. So if you take rodents in a rodent model study and you give them high fat diets to basically induce weight gain, well, they found that lucrose, this sugar, seemed to prevent some of the lipid accumulation, some of the fat buildup. It did this because it downregulated some of the genes that were associated with lipid accumulation and it increased some of the genes associated with beta oxidation or fat burning. And finally, there's a sugar called trehalose now, trehalose is interesting because it has been demonstrated to brown white fat. So turn white fat to be more metabolically active. So basically turns it into brown fat, which has uncoupling abilities to basically dissipate calories as heat rather than just store it. And it also seems to have the ability to reduce white adipose tissue hypertrophy, the swelling or growing 
of white fat, the nasty, unsightly, jiggly fat that we don't really want. But there's one other piece of the equation we need to look at, and that's the enzymatic value of honey. So sure, the sugars are different. And yeah, there's some minerals and nutrients in there that are important. And there's some amino acids for sure. There's like arginine and whatnot, but there's also enzymes. And the first enzyme we have to look at that's in honey is one that's called invertase. And invertase helps take sucrose and break apart the glucose and the fructose from the sucrose. So sucrose is glucose and fructose together. Invertase helps break that apart so that the body can deal with it better. It may seem like, why do we want more efficiency? Don't we want to disrupt the breakdown of this? To a certain degree, but we also want efficiency and utilization of these. So invertase is an important one, but the enzyme that's probably even more important is diastase, because it sort of helps amylase form, and that helps break down starches. So when you have honey along with starches, honey can help the proper utilization of those starches better. So in essence, it helps hydrolyze the starches so that you can form beta amylase in which you can actually use the carbs better, right? So instead of having glucose elevated for a long period of time, it's helping the cell potentially uptake the glucose and therefore use it and not have it sit in your bloodstream for a long time, which is gonna help your area under the curve, which if you are someone that is metabolically unhealthy or dealing with insulin resistance, that's going to make it so you have less potential for weight gain or fat gain. Because when insulin is chronically elevated, yes, you do put yourself at a potential risk to gain more fat because insulin impedes lipolysis. Insulin impedes the action of hormone-sensitive lipase, which is what starts the fat burning process in the first place. So yes, they are the same. And if you're looking purely at calories in, calories out, yeah, you could put yourself in a very similar situation as if you had sugar. But if you're looking down the line and looking at fat accumulation and particularly visceral fat accumulation, it seems like honey's a win. As always, I will see you tomorrow.